earlier this year, he had a hairstyle that looks sort of like mine. Oh. <laughs> he is the man that teaches me more about black history than I know. I want everybody to give a big round of applause for Patrick Harvey! Thank you, Anthony. I actually went out to eat with Anthony one night last week, mm -hmm. and I ordered the fish and chips, and I asked him to hold the tartar sauce, and he looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> hold the tartar sauce? And I was like, yeah, I don't really like tartar sauce. I like malt vinegar. And Anthony's like, I don't really like vinegar so much, but I do like Miracle Whip. <laughs> And I'm like, Anthony, you get whiter every time we hang out. Because <laughs> mayonnaise is white, but Miracle Whip is super white. <laughs> I've never really cared for Miracle Whip. And after years of experience and research, it's finally hit me why. Miracle Whip tastes like vagina that really needs to be washed. <laughs> You hippies know it, you hippies know it as festival pussy. Yes. Now, I've noticed also lately that girls' boot fashions are getting higher. And I'm totally cool with that as long as the boot to skirt ratio remains constant. <laughs> Thank you very much. Has anybody here ever experienced time travel? Thank you very much. Has anybody here ever experienced time travel? I feel like maybe as you get older, life becomes more and more like time travel. Which is why I'm planning my senility. Like, Elderly people, they get to do pretty much whatever they want. And sometimes whatever they don't want. We all know somebody who's reached that ripe old age where they received their unofficial license to kill. I mean, it's true. For instance, like, when I'm 90, if marijuana is still illegal, and if I'm living here in the good old commonwealth, this story is going to be true. I'm just going to smoke openly, right out in public. And when the authorities come up to hassle me, I'm just going to flip the script. Illegal? What are you talking illegal? You're offering me drugs, you're offering a lot! <laughs> Until they just leave me alone. <laughs> Because that's what we do for the elderly. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm halfway there. I turned 40 a couple of years ago. Seriously, I'm gonna let that sink in while I watch the hearts break. <laughs> and 40 is over the hill. Obviously not anymore. I think it's more like infancy. Because my balls dropped. And Farting is a game. <laughs> you sir, you ever shit yourself? <laughs> yeah, me neither. But, have you ever shit yourself while you're naked? Cuddled up to your sweetheart? I know that right there, people, is a test of love. So I've heard. But, when it happens, you know it's true love based on the reaction. You know, if they don't freak out and bolt. It's true love when they just look at you and they say something real cute or funny or sweet. Like, did you just shit on me? <laughs> and there's really, honestly, only one answer to that question. I love you. <laughs> it's 
speaking of love, I love corduroy and velour. These are two materials I think ought to be made double-sided. Just for pants. Just for the sheer enjoyment of walking. I mean, how much cheerier would people be if they could actually feel the awesomeness in their stride? A little bit about myself. I have this condition where I tend to hear euphemisms where they don't exist. I was out with some people and everybody was raving about the hot corn soup. And all I could think was, that sounds like a tossed salad gone bad. <laughs> Double euphemism. That's a twofer for you right there. And how come candy corn is so damn popular? How come they haven't gone into business? Nobody likes candy corn. I mean, whose money are they laundering? You know? I would rather eat jujubees than candy corn. And not from the box. I'm talking about the ones on the floor in the theater. Suspect or coincidence? The animal shelter and the landfill are always down the same road. Hey, I didn't put them there. But I'm also starting to get a little suspect, don't take this wrong people, I'm starting to get a little suspect of the whole breast cancer awareness movement. I mean, men, if you want to wear pink, just wear pink, it's cool. It's all good, just own it. You know? <laughs> but while I'm handing out advice, <laughs> Folks, great sex is no reason to stay together. <laughs> However, breaking up is no reason not to have great sex. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, new vagina is nice, don't get me wrong, but that old one that you can never forget about, that one that treated you right, you know, the one that was so tight, it took three days to regrow your penis dermis. <laughs> Wait, what? Ladies, I'm not gonna leave you out of this joke, all right? Just substitute nice wide penis for nice tight vagina and make it fit for you. You know, that one that turns your innie into an Audi. And I'm not talking about your navel. <laughs> The one that you make sure you hit up the night before your annual exam just so that appointment goes smoother. <laughs> what? And I'm not gonna leave anybody out of this joke. I'm gonna touch on everybody here. If you happen to be gay, pick a side, make it fit for you. <laughs> you know, that one that turns your innie into an Audi. <laughs> As long as we're talking about nice wide penis, I rolled in the bathroom one evening and I walked right into the stall that night. And normally I don't do that. I mean, if I've got an urgency and I've really got to go, I'll just stroll in there. I'm confident. I'll roll in there with my nice wide penis in my hand, ready to roll. But I wasn't feeling an urgency this night, so I went to the stall because there's nothing quite like standing next to a man in the men's room and not peeing. That just creates an unnecessary discomfort. And the last place in the world I need to do that is in the men's room. I have this game I play with myself in the bathroom. See what I did there? <laughs> but really, I like to race the toilet. Anybody else do that? Race the toilet? <laughs> nice. I like to flush right when I start peeing. Because nowadays, I'll take a win anywhere I can get it. <laughs> but, you know, depending on how full my bladder is, this might not necessarily be a guaranteed win. So, I go in the stall, and I hear the fellow in the next stall finish up and leave. And the next sound I hear, was the hand dryer. I didn't hear the sink. I know. Now I know some people 
definitely go to the bathroom and leave without washing their hands. And I see some of you fuckers in here tonight, and I'm not going to point you out, because that would ruin the game for everybody else here tonight. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, why did this man, why, uh, why did he dry his hands if he hadn't washed them? And the only thing I could come up with was, he obviously peed on his hands. And then just dried them. <laughs> so there's jokers running around out there giving out the dry pee handshake. <laughs> and that's no longer a joke. That shit just ain't right. One more thing before I take off tonight. Please feel free to mingle and chat with the comedians you see here tonight. Hell, get an autograph, you know? You never know. One of these days, some of these people might be famous. One of these days, some of these people might kill themselves, and then that autograph's going to be worth some money. And the only investment was a little bit of your time. So get to know people, because it's worth it. Thank you. Big round applause of Patrick Harvey. Taught us life lessons tonight. We got the heat turned up.